Love that performance. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be joined here in studio by Jennifer Tank, Professor of Bio Biological Sciences at the University of Notre Dame College of Science. Jennifer, welcome here to Notre Dame Day. We were chatting Thanks. during that performance a little bit. I think I could sit here and chat with you all day. Um, thank you. Um, thank you for being here. Uh, I understand that you're the interim director of the Notre Dame Environmental Change Initiative here at the university. Explain what that initiative is all about. Yeah, the Environmental Change in Initiative, we call it the ECI, is a um, group of about 40 faculty at the university that are focused focused around some of the great environmental challenges of our day. Um, invasive species, climate change, land use change, and how those um, uh, huge pressures are influencing the environment. And so we're working across colleges, um, College of Science, Arts and Letters, Engineering, and Architecture to sort of solve some of those grand challenges. Now, one thing I was really interested about here is uh, that I understand that you're researching agricultural conservation practices that would prevent what's called the dead zone in yeah. the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. Can you explain what the dead zone is and how we go about trying to fix it. Yeah, the, so the dead zone um, occurs every year around June in the Gulf of Mexico and it basically is an area of water that there's no oxygen. The wow. fish and the shellfish in that water die. And it's actually coming from agricultural runoff of fertilizers way up here in the Corn Belt. And so what we're trying to do is work to find practices that work for farmers that keeps the fertilizer that they buy on the land instead of letting it run off during say storm or snow melt into the waterways and head to the Gulf of Mexico. So that's kind of our goal. Yeah, that sounds like a very large issue. It could yeah, be. It's yeah, it's a big issue. Um, and how do you characterize an invasive species? You touched on that a bit. Uh, we've all seen the internet videos of fish that are jumping into people's boats. Is, is that the kind of thing that we're talking about Yeah, here? those are, those are amazing videos. Yeah. I mean, they kind of get addictive. You can go from one to one on, right. on YouTube. But um, those are Asian carps that right. are jumping as boats move through the water. And they think they jump because of the disturbance of the boat motor. Um, there are a lot of different invasive species. Those are kind of the poster child for dramatic invasive species because they're they're actually a hazard to boaters as well as sort of the environmental impacts that they have. But there are also invasive plants, um, things that you can see and can't see. And, and the idea at the ECI is to prevent invasive species from becoming established, um, prevent them from getting into these systems and really changing the way these um, the, uh, these ecosystems work. And that's a problem close to home as well for yeah. us here when it comes to the Great Lakes. Yeah, can you yeah, talk it about is. That? Yeah, the, well, with the Asian carp, they're right. sort of moving up the Illinois River closer and closer. Um, some people say they may have already gotten into the Great Lakes. We're working at the ECI to develop early detection uh, techniques that allows us to find out if some, before something hits that maybe there's one or two or ten instead of um, only knowing they've gotten there when you see these huge environmental impacts. So it's kind of like detective work, only it's environmental detective work. Right. And they get so large as yeah. well. I was over yeah. at, the, at the aquarium in Chicago yes. recently and great... they have them there in the exhibit and all the kids are looking at them, they're huge. Put them nose to nose with an Asian carp. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. no, it's really good. And, and staying on that topic, can you just explain I mean, where do they become, you know, where do they come from in the first place? Well, invasions um, uh, are usually inadvertent introductions. Um, Asian carps um, and were for the um, uh, aquaculture trade uh, in um, uh, down south for catfish farms. They were cleaning up algae as they as they go along the bottom and clean algae and they, they got out accidentally into the rivers and, and streams. Um, other invasions can happen through ballast water, um, from ships that they empty their ballast water into a marina or a harbor and accidentally introduce something new. Mm. Um, it can happen when people dump out their aquaria. I mean, how many people have emptied their aquarium? You know, the fish all die and they decide, oh, we're going to dump all these plants down the toilet. Right. Well, that, that's never a good choice because something that's not native can become established um, uh, through those inadvertent introductions. And that comes to my last question is what can we do to make sure that we're not having a harmful effect on the environment? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, ECI, it, we're trying through the research that we do is to provide tools for managers that can help prevent these types of introductions early on. But even, you know, in your day-to-day -day life, just being responsible about, you know, when you move, say, your kayak or your canoe or your boat from one uh, lake to another, wash off the boat motor, get all those aquatic plants off the propellers or your canoe. Um, if you're going, you know, if you're fishing and you've got your waders on, make sure to wash your waders in between rivers um, and, and and never dump your um, your pets down the toilet. <laughs> so those are those are just some of the things that yeah. just every day you can do to prevent invasions. Yeah. Jennifer, a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining yeah. us here for ND Day. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It was exciting. Right. Excellent.